Jack Brickhouse. He did everything. Was a jack of all trades. A lot of times you have someone who specializes in one thing, Jack could do it all. From car shows to conventions. Now, what do you think about uh, the Kennedy picture that, that keeps uh, coming into focus now into this convention? Well, I have no knowledge about it as we're talking now. Would you consider it a vote of confidence if at Wrigley Field this year they sold jelly beans instead of hot dogs? <laughs> Popes to presidents. Thank you so much, Mr. President. And this is Jack Brickhouse, WGN Sports at the White House. Whether interviewing Richard J. Daly or a young Mike Ditka. Mr. Percy endorsed Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. uh, would you have any alternate candidates in mind? The famous tennis player, Billie Jean King. For half a century, Brickhouse was an eyewitness to Chicago history. And we are lucky enough to have the hospitality of the Vice President of the United States, Hubert Humphrey. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much. Thank you. It's very great pleasure for me to be on your show. I don't know whether we're going to talk politics or sports, but I'm ready for both. Uh, I guess one of the rewarding things about a job like mine has been the marvelous, marvelous opportunity to be on the scene from, for some of these truly great moments. Born in Peoria, Brickhouse was just 11 years old when he got his first job in journalism as a paper boy, delivering the Peoria Journal to neighborhood doorsteps. He began his broadcasting career at radio station WMBD when he was only 18 years old. There he made headlines for climbing a 254 foot transmitter tower without a safety net of any kind, and then broadcast live for 15 minutes when he reached the top. He served in the U.S. Marines, and in 1940, he came to work in Chicago at WGN Radio. So even though Jack Brickhouse grew up in Peoria, he was Mr. Chicago. He embraced the city from the minute he got here in 1940. And when the station, the television station, launched in 1948, you know, television was in its infancy. By 1948, when 100,000 people watched the gala debut of WGN-TV's new television adventure, he was the first person to appear on Channel 9's inaugural broadcast. He was the first face that people saw when they saw WGN, and that's what they associated with the station. That face would become one of the most beloved and enduring in Chicago television history. He was the face anytime you looked on television, it was Jack Brickhouse. What's Ted Williams really like as a manager? Well, uh, Jack, let's... And that's because Brickhouse was a man for all seasons. The new field boss of the Chicago Cubs is Chicagoan Bob Kennedy. Sports seasons. I had dinner with him one night. He was, he was a good guy, really loyal with, the, you know, with Chicago. He served as the play-by-play -play announcer on WGN Radio for the Bears and on WGN TV for the Bulls, Cubs, and White Sox. Jack was, when I think about it, was kind of amazing. You know, he'd do the Sox and the Cub games on, T on Channel 9. Brickhouse transitioned from radio to TV sports, finding the rules of the game changed. Like viewers at home, he now watched the screen. He honed a sparse announcing style that let the pictures, not his words, tell the story. At a time where television was in its infancy and everybody was trying to figure out what was the right formula, he was able to figure that out. And despite his range and experience across topics... Uh, Nixon uh, has the experience. Uh, what were some of the problems with that rookie year? Well, Jack, I... And teams... George Altman, welcome home. Thank you very much, Jack. I'm very happy to be back with the Chicago Cubs. What else did he do as a broadcaster? It's more like, what didn't he do? I mean, the only team that he didn't do was the Blackhawks. He was a Bulls announcer. He was a White Sox announcer for over two decades. He was the Bears announcer for a long time. Less than two weeks after WGN signed on the air, it was providing coverage of all home games for both Chicago teams. Even the Sox night games were being televised, the first live night baseball coverage anywhere. Gene Autry attended the Cubs home opener, and so did a soon-to-be-famous TV baseball announcer. He did everything. He was a Chicago guy through and through. Who's going to start tomorrow against San Francisco? Bob Buell is going to pitch again. He was best known as the voice of the Cubs. Uh, these eyes have seen several no-hitters, I think nine of them. It's a no-hitter for Kenny Holtzman! It's a no-hitter for Kenny Holtzman! A no-hitter for the kid, Bert Hutton! For a span of nearly 40 years, he was a fixture in the broadcast booth, which at the time was positioned high above the Wrigley Field third baseline. Cubs, regardless of what was going on, the Cubs were his team, 
His tenure overlapped with the early decades of the team's fabled 108-year World Series drought. Between World War II and the early part of the 80s, the Cubs were terrible. They didn't go to the World Series, they barely contended, and Jack Brickhouse was there for all of it. Brickhouse, however, managed to convey the hope of a sunrise every time he signed on the air for day baseball at Wrigley. Jack Brickhouse had this great voice. It was a wonderful voice. It was a voice that, that made it seem okay. Today's okay. And, and the winds are coming in off the lake into Wrigley Field. And today we're gonna have a baseball game. And it doesn't matter if the Cubs win or not. The ball game is all over and what a day that Madlock has had. Man alive, woo boy. I think that we are, as a fan base, inherently optimistic, and I'm an optimistic person just by virtue of having grown up listening to Jack Brickhouse and working with him. You know that there were 15 runs scored in those two games, and we only missed one run. Brickhouse coined a phrase that captured the spontaneous excitement of a home run. It was as brief as it was boisterous. About the second year we were televising, Hank Sauer hit one, and I guess I yelled that, and I had been doing it without realizing it, and the crew superimposed hey hey on the monitor at the booth, and we all cracked up on it, and decided after that to leave it in. The foul poles at Wrigley Field are forever adorned with that phrase in Brickhouse's honor. Jack never saw the Cubs lose. He might have seen them run out of innings a time or two. And he passed that along to Ernie Banks. Hey, hey, holy mackerel, no doubt about it. The Cubs are on their way. Hey, hey, hey! And it all went along to Cub fans. And he just had this undying love of the team. Brickhouse called more than 5,000 games on WGN-TV. Because of early acquisition at Andover, we got the Telstar circuit early in the president. On July 23rd, 1962, the new Telstar communications satellite made it possible to send live pictures around the world. The first images of the United States seen in Europe, Cubs baseball via WGN. In any case, here it is, a brief glimpse of American baseball played in the biggest arena in the world all the way from Wrigley Field in Chicago to the Coliseum in Rome. During most of the 60s, the Cubs limped along as the lovable losers. But in 1969, fans were glued to WGN, as Brickhouse described the most riveting and ultimately agonizing season in Cubs history. That's him. The Black Cat cursed season of 1969 was the closest Brookhouse ever came to the dream of calling a Cubs World Series. Instead of narrating epic victories, his voice echoes in the memorable moments. Factor is out of the southeast at seven miles an hour. The biggest moment was Ernie Banks' uh, 500th home run. Jarvis fires away. That's a fly ball deep the left. Back, back. That's it. That's it. Hey, hey. He did it. Ernie Banks got number 500. A line drive shot into the seats and left. The ball tossed to the bullpen. Everybody on your feet. This is it. Whee! We'd like to present to Jack this Wrigley Field lifetime pass. Oh, uh -huh. Jack, turn it for the camera. Ernie wants to shoot it. In 1979, Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne was the MC on Jack Brickhouse Day at Wrigley Field, commemorating his 5,000th broadcast for WGN. But out there behind me, in those bleachers, I see the greatest fans in the world. So with your permission, I would like to turn around and give a low bow to maybe three generations of the greatest fans who ever lived. In 1981, he retired and was replaced by his friend, Harry Carey. The picture tells the story. To this day, there are reminders of Brick House across the city, on the Magnificent Mile, an honorary street, outside of Wrigley Field, the Brick House Tavern, and at Pioneer Court, just a few feet from the studio where he made his first appearance on TV, the jack-of-all-trades is memorialized in a bust 
that celebrates his Hall of Fame career, parts of five decades as the face of WGN. Jack Brickhouse was every man. So you could look at him and say, I could just as soon be sitting across the bar from him, having a drink and talking sports. And that was Mike Lowe reporting. Jack Brickhouse died of cardiac arrest in 1998. He was 82. He died just six months after Harry Carey. And Harry will be the subject of a later WGN at 75 segment. But next week on WGN at 75, Mike will have the colorful origin story of the WGN slogan, Chicago's very own. And we'll have special coverage every Thursday night through April right here on the WGN News at 9. And we'll have a special section of our website you'll find devoted to stories about the 75th anniversary. You can read more at WGNTV.com slash 75.